this evening. Guyana welcomes Venezuela's participation in ICJ border controversy proceedings. Tune in as we explore the latest developments in the border dispute between Guyana and Venezuela, with Venezuela submitting arguments to the ICJ despite previous objections. Stay updated on the investigation into the shooting incident at Middle Road Le Penitence. Join us as we delve into the details of a shooting incident that left a 26-year-old man hospitalized with multiple gunshot wounds, highlighting ongoing efforts by law enforcement to apprehend the suspects and ensure justice for the victim. Also, Ministry of Health takes proactive steps to combat cervical cancer. Learn about the Ministry of Health's proactive measures to combat cervical cancer among females, including initiatives to integrate the HPV vaccine aimed at reducing cervical cancer incidence and improving healthcare access. Plus, construction worker arrested for possession of cannabis. Get the latest updates on a construction worker arrested for possession of cannabis during a police roadblock exercise on the east coast of the Marara. And former Vice President of Ecuador moved to the military hospital. Stay informed as we discuss the latest developments involving former Vice President Jorge Glass of Ecuador who was moved from prison to military hospital after falling ill, following his arrest by police at the Mexican embassy in Quito, triggering a major diplomatic crisis. Don't miss these top stories and more. Welcome to this broadcast of Channel 2's headline news update for April 9th, 2024. I'm Bibi Bacchus. Thank you for joining us. First up, Venezuela has submitted arguments to the International Court of Justice regarding the border controversy with Guyana, despite previously rejecting the ICJ's jurisdiction in a questionable referendum. Guyana's government has welcomed Venezuela's participation in the judicial proceedings, reiterating its unwavering commitment to abide by the ICJ's ruling, a stance that underscores its dedication to international law. This move follows months of tension, including troops' deployment near the border and breaches of previous agreements. Ghana reaffirmed its commitment to the ICJ's final and binding judgment. During a live broadcast, President Dr. Mohamed Irfan Ali reaffirmed the country's sovereignty and independence. He addressed Venezuela's recent allegations regarding oil exploration concessions held by ExxonMobil and other investors and dismissed them as unfounded. President Ali welcomed Venezuela's submission of its counter memorial to the International Court of Justice regarding the 1899 Arbitral Award, a case initiated by Guyana in 2018 to determine the legality of the land boundary settled between the two nations. President Ali emphasized Ghana's commitment to abide by the ICJ's decision and urged Venezuela to engage fully. The President reminded both parties of the court's order on provisional measures, which prohibits Venezuela from undermining Ghana's control of the executable. Venezuela's recent actions, including claims to two-thirds of Guyanese territory, have drawn condemnation from international bodies like the Organization of American States and CARICOM. The border controversy dates back to the 19th century and has undergone various attempts at resolution. After diplomatic efforts fail, the current proceedings at the ICJ now follows. On a different note, detectives are investigating a shooting that left a 26-year-old man hospitalized with five gunshot wounds. The incident occurred at Middle Road, the Penitence, Georgetown, around 11.30 a.m. on Monday, April 8. The victim, who is no stranger to the law, identified as Shane Bourne of Lane Avenue, Georgetown, had left home to go on his motorcycle to get some food when two unidentified males reportedly approached him on a motorcycle, one of whom fired several shots at him. Bourne was struck four times in the right thigh and once in the left thigh. The suspect fled the scene. Bourne was taken to the Georgetown Public Hospital by public spirited citizens and is listed in stable condition. Bourne and another man, Ryan Goodlock, were charged in October 2023 for the attempted murder of three men, Sherwin Bob, Sion Ross, and Hamilton Dickerson, during a shooting at Independence Boulevard. Investigations are ongoing. Moving on, the Ministry of Health is taking proactive steps to combat cervical cancer among females, recognizing it as a prevalent disease affecting over half of the female population. In collaboration with various healthcare entities, including the Chronic Disease Unit and the Georgetown Public Hospital Corporation, a continuing medical education session was held to develop a comprehensive plan for eradicating cervical cancer. 
Minister of Health Dr. Frank Anthony emphasized the importance of integrating the human papillomavirus vaccine and implementing new strategies to reduce cervical cancer incidence. He urged physicians to discuss the vaccine with their patients, highlighting its effectiveness in prevention. Additionally, Minister Anthony announced plans to offer free HPV testing within the public health system from 2025 onwards, aiming to make screening more accessible and affordable. A budget of $2.8 billion has been allocated to subsidize cervical cancer testing, which will benefit approximately 350,000 individuals this year. Stick around when we return. Construction worker arrested with suspected cannabis during roadblock and Ghana Public Service Co-op Credit Union elections declared valid. New management cleared to assume roles. This Mother's Day, celebrate in style and give mom the chance to win big. Simply top up with $1,000 or more for a chance to be one of five lucky winners of a brand new fully stocked French door fridge with groceries worth over $550,000 each. One winner will be selected weekly from April 5th to May 9th. Start topping up today. Digicel, the network for everyone, everywhere. Good, good girl, forget things. Good. Problem, Granny. I want money for bar for those surgery. I was dancing and I fall and fracture my hip. If you need some quick money, you should check Lenders Jewelry and Pawn Shop. Lenders Jewelry and Pawn Shop, Lot 238 South Road, Border, Georgetown. Get jewelry made to order in just 72 hours. We also accept vehicles. Lenders, best rates, longest payback period. Boys, I get through. Plus, I could dance again. <laughs> Lenders Jewelry and Pawn Shop. Furnishing your home or office has never been easier. Here at Kisum's, our inventory of locally made and imported furniture, offered at amazing prices, will leave you wanting more. From vinyl, floor rugs, and carpets, bedroom, dining, and living room sets, mattresses, pillows, office desks, chairs, and filing cabinets, outdoor benches, and tables, we have a piece of furniture for every room imaginable in your home or office. Check out our flagship store at Industrial Site Rheinfeld or one of our branches in New Amsterdam, Port Morant, Riverton and Camp Street, Kisoon's Furniture, furnishing homes for over 50 years. Sneak away with the gift of sight from modern optical services. Let our professional team examine and prescribe what's best for your eyes. How is smiles make fashionable faces? See us for a full line of optical services, including brand name and prescription eyewear. Modern Optical Services, 316 Mill Street, Georgetown, telephone 226-1082. Welcome back. Justice Narendra Singh ruled on Monday that the March 2nd elections for the Ghana Public Service Cooperative Credit Union were valid. This means 12 individuals elected during the special elections can now take up their roles without further delay. The new management team, democratically elected and led by Mr. Trevor Ben, emerged victorious with the most votes. However, the previous management contested the results, claiming the elections were not conducted properly. Nevertheless, the court ruled in favor of the newly elected committee, allowing them to assume their positions. 
the Chief Cooperative Development Officer and the former Management Committee were both restrained from preventing the new committee from taking office. The ruling came after a period of chaos and confusion following the elections. In other news, a construction worker is now in police custody after being found in possession of cannabis. During a roadblock exercise on Helena Public Road, East Coast of Marara, police stopped several vehicles, including minibus BAC 6035, where they noticed a passenger behaving suspiciously with a camouflage haversack. A search was conducted on 27-year-old Kellon Adams of Marshall Street, Annadale, East Coast, Demerara. The police found two bulky transparent plastic wraps containing suspected cannabis leaves, seeds, and stems in the haversack he was carrying. Adams was arrested and the suspected cannabis, weighing over 3,500 grams, was seized and lodged at Mahaika Police Station. Investigations into the matter are ongoing. Don't go away after the break. Nicaragua to ICJ and Germany's support of Israeli genocide in Gaza and cities in Russia's Ural West Siberia race for worse floods in decades. This Mother's Day, celebrate in style and give mom the chance to win big. Simply top up with $1,000 or more for a chance to be one of five lucky winners of a brand new fully stocked French door fridge with groceries worth over $550,000 each. One winner will be selected weekly from April 5th to May 9th. Start topping up today. Digicel, the network for everyone, everywhere. Good, good girl, forget things. Good. Problem, Granny. I want money for bar for those soldiers. I was dancing on a fall and fracture my hip. If you need some quick money, you should check Lenders Jewelry and Pawn Shop. Lenders Jewelry and Pawn Shop, Lot 238 South Road, Border, Georgetown. Get jewelry made to order in just 72 hours. We also accept vehicles. Lenders, best rates, longest payback period. Boys, I get through. Plus, I could dance again. <laughs> Lenders Jewelry and Pawn Shop. Modern Optical Services. Three sixteen Mill Street, Georgetown. Telephone two two six one zero eight two. Furnishing your home or office has never been easier. Here at Kisum's, our inventory of locally made and imported furniture, offered at amazing prices, will leave you wanting more. From vinyl, floor rugs, and carpets, bedroom, dining, and living room sets, mattresses, pillows, office desks, chairs, and filing cabinets, outdoor benches, and tables, we have a piece of furniture for every room imaginable in your home or office. Check out our flagship store at Industrial Site Rheinfeld or one of our branches in New Amsterdam, Port Morant, Carriverton, and Camp Street. Kisun's Furniture, furnishing homes for over 50 years. Welcome back. Now we take a look at what's happening in the region and around the world. In a horrifying incident in Trinidad, police unearthed a gruesome scene where a four-year-old was beheaded on Monday night. The child's neck was sawed off with a knife by a 39-year-old man, now in police custody. The child's mother, seeking help, arrived at Aruka police station with torn clothes. Officers accompanied her home where they discovered the child's body in one bedroom and her head in a barrel. Senior Superintendent Richard Smith revealed officers broke down upon the grim find, some now requiring counseling. Neighbors expressed shock, with one recalling hearing the perpetrator chanting, Crime scene investigators, hindered by poor lighting, promised to return for further investigations later. The perpetrator remains in custody, pending charges. Ecuador's former Vice President Jorge Glass has been moved from prison to a military hospital. He became ill after refusing the food provided in jail. Police stormed the Mexican embassy in Quito on Friday, arresting Glass and triggering a major diplomatic crisis. Glass was seeking asylum in Mexico. Al Jazeera's Lucia Newman explains. The fallout from Ecuador's raid on the Mexican embassy to extract a former Ecuadorian vice president who'd been granted asylum is escalating sharply. 
for once, every government in the Americas, from the far left to the far right, has condemned what is widely regarded as a violation of Mexico's sovereignty and the right to asylum. Embassies are regarded as foreign soil, according to the 1960 Vienna Convention. Mexico's president thanked the international community for its support as he criticized Ecuador. It was incredible. Not even Pinochet and other authoritarian leaders had dared to go so far. We're taking this side affair before the International Court of Justice. Even with Latin American countries breaking ties with Ecuador or recalling their ambassadors, Ecuador remains unrepentant. Mexico violated the principles of non-intervention in other states. It is illicit to grant asylum to people who have been sentenced or accused of common crimes. Ecuador's president also weighed in for the first time, saying that justice cannot be negotiated. It's an irony that Ecuador was willing to grant asylum to Australian whistleblower Julian Assange, who remained in the Ecuadorian consulate in London for seven years. The former vice president, though, Jorge Glass, had been sentenced to eight years in prison for corruption when he sought asylum in the Mexican embassy, where he was grabbed by special forces police. Now his lawyer says she fears for his life. This is a kidnapping and we believe that at any moment they can kill him. Whether Glass is a common criminal or not, both the community of Latin American and Caribbean states, as well as all 35 members of the Organization of American States, will hold emergency meetings in the next two days to discuss a violation of international law that all except Ecuador insist cannot be repeated. Lucia Newman, Al Jazeera, Santiago. Internationally, Germany is facing charges at the top United Nations court for allegedly facilitating the commission of genocide against Palestinians in Gaza in coordination with its military and political ally, Israel. Nicaragua presented its case before the International Court of Justice on Monday, demanding judges impose emergency measures to stop Berlin from providing Israel with weapons and other assistance. Al Jazeera's Step Vessin reports from The Hague. For two hours, Nicaragua laid out its case against Germany. Please be seated. The sitting is open. Accusing it of facilitating genocide. But 80 years on from the Holocaust. Germany emphasizes that its assistance to Israel is a raison d'etat because of the historical treatment of the Jewish people during the Nazi regime. That is an understandable and laudable policy if it were addressed to the Jewish people. The Israeli state, in particular its present government, should not be confused and equated with the Jewish people. For the first time, two countries appeared at the International Court of Justice, which are indirectly involved in the atrocities at stake. But Nicaragua argues Germany is indirectly involved by sending arms and ammunition used against civilians in Gaza. German weapons exports to Israel have increased tenfold to $323 million in 2023 from $32 million the year before. Research Institute Forensic Architecture has documented recent sales of torpedoes, tank ammunition and engines for military equipment and the lease of so-called Heron drones. German companies involved in the military industry are directly profiting from the situation as they have seen their share prices rise since 7 October. In his book, Whitewashing and State Building, Daniel Marvieski writes that Germany's post-war military and financial support for Israel has mainly been about Germany's own rehabilitation. In the beginning, the relationship has nothing to do with morality uh, and a lot to do with pragmatism also on the Israeli side, which however has changed. So today I would say that there is sort of like a moral uh, dimension to the German support, but it's not only moral. Nothing is ever only moral. This case is seen as a test for international justice. Can a country that is not directly committing atrocities be held responsible for facilitating them? A Dutch court recently ruled that countries selling weapons are bound by international treaties, meaning that these weapons can't be sold if there's a risk of humanitarian international law be violated. And Nicaragua argues that this is the case in Gaza.
Germany has dismissed Nicaragua's allegations. Germany does not and never did violate the Genocide Convention nor international humanitarian law, neither directly nor indirectly. She said she would give more details during Germany's defense on Tuesday, when it has its turn before the court. Step fast on Al Jazeera, The Hague. Finally, several regions in Russia have declared a state of emergency after some of their worst flooding in decades. Siberia and the Urals are among the worst hit. More than 10,000 homes have been flooded there. Al Jazeera's Dmitry Medvedenko reports. This is what the coming of spring can look like in Russia. The Ural River, Europe's third longest, bursting its banks and rising. Flood waters caused by winter snow melting in the Adinburg region have swept through thousands of homes. The mayor says people should leave if they can before it's too late. I didn't want to leave. I thought I'm too old and wouldn't go, but they persuaded me. I want to wail, not just cry. I feel terrible. The river first burst through this dam in Orsk, flooding the city. The region's governor says flooding has been recorded along the entire two and a half thousand kilometer long river that flows through Kazakhstan into the Caspian Sea. Russian officials say 39 regions have or will be affected. Controlled explosions are being carried out in ice and snow in some regions to prevent further flooding. And farmers are pulling out cattle stuck in the mud. Rescue and relief efforts are underway. The Russian emergencies minister says the flooding is the worst the region has seen in decades. We even bought a boat yesterday so that we can reach our relatives if something happens to bring them first aid or medicine. Water levels are expected to continue rising for at least another two days. Dmitry Medvedenko, Al Jazeera. This brings us to the end of the regional and global news coverage. Up next is the 3 day weather forecast. And that's Safe TV 2 headline news for this Tuesday evening. As we take our leave, we invite you to follow us on Facebook and YouTube. You can tune in tomorrow at 6.30 a.m. for a rebroadcast and 7 p.m. for more news. Until then, please take care of yourself and each other.